Hi, this is Chippy with UMPC Portal, and we've got a netbook today. It's the Acer Aspire One D522, which is an AMD Fusion-based netbook. We haven't had a, a netbook for a while. We certainly haven't had an AMD-based device for a while. I think the last one was probably the Rayon Digital Everon Note, which was uh, an interesting UMPC uh, clamshell UMPC. This time, it's a 10-inch netbook with an HD screen, 1280 by 720, I think is the uh, resolution, uh, and the AMD C. 50 Fusion APU, which is a 1 GHz dual core CPU with the Radeon graphics uh, and an HD decoding unit as well. So putting it right at the top end of the netbook range in terms of performance, but the price is very interesting on this. I've just bought this literally this afternoon in a shop for 299 euros in Europe. Uh, so that is at a quite an amazing price point for, for what we've got in here. HDMI out, uh, some memory expansion capability as well. It's got one gigabyte uh, in it. Uh, so over the next days, we're gonna be doing some testing uh, both on the two, uh, 522 and on the Fusion platform to see where it stands in the range of devices that are out at the moment uh, and also uh, get some a full review done. For this, for, for this video, let's take a look around the uh, uh, D522 and uh, see what we can see. So here's the box, fairly straightforward. Um, Acer Aspire 1 522. This is actually bought in uh, Germany, so you'll see the German keyboard on it, German Windows 7 Home Starter in it. I'm not actually 100% of the uh, sure of the finer specs in this. For example, Bluetooth, does it support HS? Uh, does it have USB 3? Uh, what well, we're going to find out right now. So let's uh, break this in and get uh, right into it, see what we've got included in the package. Yeah, as I said, 299 euros is quite a good price point for what could potentially be a really high-end style netbook performance. There's the, uh, the boxing. There's the Aspire 1. The design I think is the same as the, was it the 255? The uh, uh, Intel Atom N550 dual-core uh, version, which in theory the CPU in that is slightly more powerful than the uh, the C50 AMD, but all looking very good. Let's have a quick look at the specs then. Here we've got Windows Starter 32-bit um, it's a well. It says an HD screen. Call it Crystal LED. One gig of memory. Two hundred fifty gigs hard drive. Uh, it's got a card reader. It's got BGM. BGN. Sorry. And I'm very pleased to see this uh, Bluetooth three plus HS. HS is the high speed component that uses the Wi-Fi module to do high speed transfers. One point three megapixel webcam and a six cell battery, which I think is a fairly medium capacity six cell battery, not uh, super high capacity. It's about forty eight watts. So let's uh, open this thing and see what uh, see what's inside. I don't want to go too mad with this because I. May not be keeping this one. I bought it, but I might actually sell it on afterwards. I'm very interested to find out more about the Fusion platform. I had some hands-on with the uh, Toshiba NB550D. The Netbook News uh, have been testing. Let's just put it to the side. See what's in the box. So here's a guarantee package and a quick guide. A list of Acer offices. We've got a fairly oh a fairly nice in-wall adapter which hopefully will have the charger for Europe in there and let's have a look at the capacity of the battery I'm gonna have to get really close to that to see um, it's gonna be on on here somewhere 4.24 amp hours at 11.1 watts so it's about 48 watt hours just under 50 I guess about 50 yeah 50 watt hour maybe so not huge capacity but it's not a hugely fat and heavy battery pack so that's quite nice the whole package should be about 1.3 kilos there's the European adapter for the charger so no CD recovery um, recovery CD in there and no other cases or anything like that so let's put it to the side and take a look at the uh, spy one itself oh, there was also a quick gu quick start guide here no no recovery CD right So, here it is, the Aspire one. So, Acer always have this uh, glossy finish on their devices, but uh, I've had a look at this design before and it really is quite nice. It's nothing uh, over the top, but it is a nice, clean, slim design. Let's go around the device. Here's something you don't see often. HDMI out, 
two USB, and they're not, they haven't got the blue insert, so I'm guessing USB 2. VGA out, so that's important for those of you that want to be using uh, projectors for presentations as well. And there's the DC in across the back is where the battery goes. I don't see any uh, SIM card slot there. Um, it has been said that there's a, uh, a version with 3G, but I don't know where the SIM card would go. It doesn't seem to be obvious there. So on the other side then we've got uh, what's probably a 10100 Ethernet port, Kensington Lock, and again another USB 2 port, microphone and headphones, and here's the uh, ST card port there with a the block. Speakers across the front, I guess, and is that a removable central unit? I'm guessing, hmm, guessing not actually, due to the screws being all the way around the outside. So, no easily accessible memory access or disk access. Windows Home Starter, right? Let's pop the battery in them, and that goes in hopefully fairly easy always fun to do these on the videos and I remember doing one with with uh, Sasha Pallenberg from Netbook News recently we were in absolute stitches trying to get the thing sorted out there we go right and that locks there and all in all feeling actually quite lightweight really nice right let's open that up little uh, errata there so as you see, it's a Quartz keyboard, it's a German uh, keyboard here, and everything is looking in the right position. This is a nice keyboard. I remember it from the, uh, from the I think it was the 255 that I had, the um, N550 base version. Wide but flush mouse but a pad. Um, slightly lighter mouse buttons that I, than I saw on the, on the other Aspire one that I tested lamps at the front there um, nothing really special about the design There's the webcam up top front in the middle there here's the power button so let's uh, switch this on for the first time I guess this is gonna be um, a fairly lengthy startup process Windows 7 starter plus all the usual crapware that's installed let's just take that off there don't need that and uh, Let's see. Um, so I'm going to boot this up right now. Come back in a minute with uh, Windows 7 Starter fully booted. And while that's booting, here's the uh, charger unit. The adapter goes in the front like that, so you don't have to carry both pieces. And I guess you just pull that. And that's quite a nice, nice lightweight unit. So it's still booting up, but I'm weighing it right now. And I'm really pleased to see that it's under the weight that it's supposed to be. 1.3 is the weight on the specs. 1.17 kilos, just under 1.2 kilos, is really good weight for a 6L uh, netbook. And that's, uh, that's a really positive start. So I've just been through a McAfee startup process and a registration process and um, first thing you should notice is glossy screen um, what that does bring now is a really nice uh, sharp image and uh, you instantly notice the one one two eight oh by seven twenty screen so it's, a, it's an HD seven twenty screen it's almost a strange resolution but um, Especially if uh, you've got some programs that don't work in under 768 vertical resolution. But I'm guessing you'll be able to put it into a virtual uh, res resolution, uh, interpolated resolution to get those programs working. So it looks like it's, uh, it's booted up okay. And uh, I'm just going to do a couple of quick tests. Screen brightness to start with. Going all the way down pretty low. You won't see that on the video because of the uh, auto brightness on the video but that looks like a reasonable range nothing excessive on the brightness side of things there and um, let's have a look at the keyboard wireless on off sleep the usual dual screen touch point on off sound on off and I'm scroll lock and everything else seems to be normal nice uh, Nice keyboard. So let's um, let's just quickly start this up just to check 
what the system settings, sorry, the system um, details are. And I'm reading it now. It's a AMD C50 processor at one gigahertz, one gig of RAM installed, seven for seven megabytes available. So 250 obviously taken up by the graphics there. Might be important to note. 32 bit system here. Good. All right. Quick look at the uh, disk space, disk partitioning on this one. And it's a single partition, that's nice. 205 gigs, free of 218. That means there's probably a recovery partition there as well, but they haven't split the rest of it up into multiple partitions, so you can work with a single partition there, no problem. Let's just pull the battery out, see what sort of charge we've got left here. 88%. And um, the one thing I always like to do is just to have a quick look through uh, Perfmon. That's taking its time. Okay, Perfmon. What we can do is start to check the uh, idle battery life or the idle drain on the device anyway. It looks like Windows 7 is still trying to start up. We go to the monitoring console. We add a monitoring Pointer Perfmon is the program. If you uh, if you want to do this on your Windows 7 Vista or XP device, you might have to start it a couple of times to get battery to show up. Well, certainly on XP and uh, Vista. So you choose discharge rate, put it in. Okay, we'll get rid of the processor settings and we will re. We'll change the graph to show full values, so let's go to 12,000 here, right, and so this gives us an indication of how the device is idling down, we've got Wi-Fi on, we've got uh, screen on, and we're down to 6.3 watts, which uh, isn't too bad for a device that's actually started up, I would expect to turn the screen off and for that to go down to something like 5 watts, Wi-Fi off, uh, maybe um, just over four watts, four to five watts, which really is good in comparison with uh, other netbooks that are around. Um, you should expect an idle rate of between five and seven watts. And let's just switch the Wi-Fi off. Oh, we've got Bluetooth, no, switch the Wi-Fi off there. Should see that go down again. We'll put the screen brightness right down now. Give that a couple of seconds and you should see that drop this is just going to go up while I was doing stuff and then it should drop down a little bit further. Of course loads more testing to do on this and at uh, umcportal.com probably one day after this video goes live, that's Tuesday the, uh, what have we now, the 7th, so that'll be Tuesday the 8th of March, we'll probably do some live testing on that. So here you go, 5.4 at the moment. I'm guessing Windows 7 is still doing some disk activity and there it goes down to 4.6. So the idle there, really not bad at all. And that's one of the indicators of a well-engineered, uh, at least, uh, motherboard. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to see that. Okay, let's uh, finish this part of the video here. Of course, loads more on UMC Portal with this as we test Fusion and the, uh, the 522 over the next days. So thanks for watching this. My name's Chippy. You can check out more at umpcportal.com. Uh, this is the Acer Aspire 1D255 on the AMD Fusion platform. Thanks for watching.